Okay, so today I'm going to talk about Aristotle. Last I, last couple lectures I talked about Plato, so we got basically the, Plato's vision of two worlds, the world inside the cave, the world outside the cave, the world inside the cave is the world of sense perception, and the world outside the cave is the, the world of the eternal forms, timeless, perfect, time, uh, changeless, form of justice, mathematical entities. Everything on, on, in, in the world that we see, the horses and cats and dogs, are actually imperfect copies of these eternal forms. The, 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 eternal, the form of the horse, the form of the cat, form of mathematical numbers, and so on. Form of justice, beauty, they're the most important ones. Form of justice, the form of the good. That's, that's what Plato was interested in. He wasn't interested in this world that we live in. If this was a world of shadows. What he was interested for Aris, for Plato, knowledge is what he was seeking, and he was seeking knowledge of the forms. For Aristotle, basically what Aristotle does is he wipes out the forms. Aristotle has no interest. He's not that he's not interested in forms. He's just he's not interested in Plato's forms. These eternal, timeless things, totally separated from the world that we live in. One of uh, a famous statement that Aristotle had was, uh, Plato is dear, dear to me, but dear still is truth. So eventually, even though Plato, Aristotle loved Plato, he had to go against some of his main ideas. The main, that mainly, the, his most, Plato's most important idea was the doctrine of the forms. Let me say a little about Aristotle. He was not an Athenian. He was not born in Athens. He was a foreigner. He came from northern Greece, from the Empire of Macedonia. His father had been a court physician to the king. And then eventually, the when the king dies, another king comes on the throne. And eventually, he's the father of, of Alexander, who becomes Alexander the Great. And later on in in uh, Aristotle's career, he actually is the tutor of Alexander the Great. That's amazing. So we have, think of these four gigantic figures that all, and I don't think there's anything like this in the history of, of the world. Yes, Socrates, and he knew Plato, and Plato, you know, knew Aristotle, and Aristotle was the tutor of Alexander the Great. That's amazing. <laughs> Alexander the Great. Now, Socrates, Plato, Aristotle, Alexander the Great. Three philosophers. Well, and then we have a, 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 an emperor, a, a king who conquers the world, you know, and it spreads the Greek world throughout the, the known world at the time. And that brought in what's the Hel called the Hellenistic world. It's the world that was conquered by Alexander the Great. And then think of the city Alexandria that's named after Alexander and the great library at Alexandria. So Socrates, Plato, Aristotle, Ale probably as most, uh, Bertrand Russell says, you know, Aristotle probably didn't teach, had no effect on Alexander the Great. Alexander the Great, even though he was a great uh, king, uh, had no interest really in philosophy and he was a, a drunkard. He wasn't, a, you know, he was arrogant. So Aristotle really didn't have any much effect on Alexander the Great. But anyway, he was his tutor for several years. So the main, the big, big, big point when you, when you think of Aristotle and Plato is that for Plato, there are two worlds, two worlds. The world down here of sense perception, the world that we see with our senses, Sense perception. For Aris, for Plato, this is a world, you know, this is inside the cave. Basically, this is the world of shadows. Plato wants to rise above this to the world of the true reality, the world of the forms. This is where math, mathematical entities exist. This is where numbers exist. This is where you find true triangles, real triangles, real circles, real justice real beauty you know down here you just find imperfect copies okay so for plato 
philosophy begins in wonder, but the wonder is really the wonder of the forms. Aristotle begins his book, The Metaphysics. Aristotle's great work on, on top metaphysics, you know, what we call metaphysics. I'll, I'll say something about that in a second. Metaphysics is deals with the study of ultimate reality, with what is really real. You know, what's what are the fundamental constituents of reality? That's what metaphysics means today. But let me say something about that because Aristotle did not know, had never heard of the word metaphysics. Okay, that may sound strange. What we call metaphysics, Aristotle called first philosophy. First philosophy. And it dealt with what he described as the study of being qua, that sounds very strange, but being qua being, meaning being as being, very abstract. It doesn't involve any specific entities. It is like a biologist will study biological creatures. Physicists study nature, uh, different disciplines break reality up and study particular parts. If you study computer science, you study computers. Aristotle wasn't, uh, metaphysic doesn't deal with the study of any specific domain. It deals with being qua being. It deals with what the, is the nature of anything whatsoever. For anything to exist whatsoever, whether it's a, a number or a spider or a star, it doesn't matter. What they all have to have something to exist, and that's what metaphysics deals with. What does it mean for anything to be? So Aristotle's metaphysics, at the beginning of the metaphysics, he has the very famous first sentence, all men by nature desire to know. That's the beginning sentence of, Arist of Aristotle's metaphysics. All men by nature desire to know. That's what Aristotle believed. Aristotle defined man or human beings as a rational animal. That's what distinguishes, Aristotle said, human beings from all other forms of life is that we have reason. Man, all men by nature desire to know. That's Aristotle. Now, what's interesting is this. Plato would not have disagreed with what Aristotle said. Er, Plato would, yeah, it's great. I mean, that's great. Plato would clap for that. All men by nature desire to know. Plato didn't have any problems with that. Plato founded the Academy, you know, which is the forerunner of all our universities and colleges. And we, the academics, that comes from uh, ultimately from the academy and it lasted for 800 years it was eventually closed i think in in around 530 by the emperor justinian um so it lasted about 800 years so plato was not had no problems with saying that all men by nature desire to know but he would have had big 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 problems with what aristotle said next to justify his claim that all men by nature desire to know what is the evidence for that? Well, Aristotle says all men by nature desire to know, and we and the evidence for this is that we take delight. We delight in our senses. You know? So human beings, we have five senses, and we delight in sense perception because it's by our senses that we explore the world. And we're curious beings. And Aristotle says, you know, that's that shows that human beings desire to know because they love using their senses. They love looking at things and trying to figure things out. Oh man, by and he pointed and he focused mainly, he said, on, on sight, on vision, because vision, you know, gives us what the world looks like. You know, sound, you could do more with vision than you can do with sound. You could, vision allows you to look at the stars and look at all the trees and the forests and the ocean. It allows you to explore the world. All oh, men by nature desire to know. And the, the reason he, he says that that's the case, he says what, the evidence for that is that we delight in sense perception. Now that would have been anathema to Plato. 
Plato would say, what are you doing? You know, all men by nature desire to know. Yeah, that's true. But come on, sense perception? For, for, for Plato, sense perception is definitely not the way to know anything. Uh, sense perception is just a way to know about the shadows. For for Plato, that's what Plato was interested in. Not, he was not interested in the shadows. He was interested in the eternal, timeless, eternal, perfect forms. And you have access to the forms, these eternal, timeless, perfect forms. You have access to the forms, like the form of beauty, for example. Or think of all the forms of mathematics. Mathematics, you know, the perfect, the circles and the triangles and, and justice and beauty. You have access to all of this stuff by the soul or reason, not the body. That's This is Plato. The body, you know, the sense perception that that Aristotle was, was so happy about, you know, all men by nature desire to know, well, though, well, because we delight in the senses. Plato would say, that is not a good reason, Aristotle. We know the body does not is not the way to knowledge. It's the soul. It's our reason. So that's the big, big, big difference between Aristotle and Plato. I mean, get, once you understand that big difference, then you can focus on the details. Uh, basically, what Aristotle does to Plato's forms, and the forms are the 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 the, the, the world down here, world. You know, the world that Heraclitus described, the world where everything is changing. Uh, this is what Aristotle's what Aristotle, Plato is not interested in this. Um, he's interested in the world of the forms. And what Aristotle does to Plato's form, he, he wipes it out. He says, when Plato talks, for example, about the form of the white, the form of the white, because everything has a form. Red has a form, blue has a form, and so on. Aristotle says, that's nonsense. It's like... It's like humming meaningless symbols, la di da di da di da. Uh, a, a white a whiteboard makes sense. White piece of paper, a white kitten, a white dog. You know anything? A white you can paint a house white. Aristotle says, you know, white is the white. Some, it's the white of something. Something is white. There's no just this whiteness, this form of whiteness, totally separated from the world that we inhabit. So Aristotle said, he just says, this is just like how many meaningless symbols talking about the form of whiteness, the form of the table. There are tables, but there's no form of the table that in, you know, separate from the world that we live in. Aristotle was not against forms, but he was against separating the forms from the world that we live in. And I'll talk about that in the ne next lecture. Aristotle says what's really real is what he calls substance, which I will, I'll talk about that later. Uh, but first of all, he wipes out the forms of, of, of Plato. So that's that's all gone. And, he, and once you get rid of the forms, you also get rid of the idea that knowledge, as Plato said, is recollection. Well, because if there, there's nothing to recollect anymore. For Plato, we when we know the form, the reason we can know the forms is because our soul has existed before we were born into this world in the world of the forms. That's when we beheld the forms. That's when we the soul came to know the forms. Once the soul is born into this world, it forgets. It, it forgets what it knew in this world and now has to remember. And that was the whole point. That was a so what Socrates was doing. He saw himself as a midwife, bringing people to understand what they already knew. So you don't, it's not, and that's what the allegory of the cave is. The people who are stuck in the cave, you know, ascend out of the cave to see the sun. But Plato believed the reason they can ascend out of the cave is because before they were born into this world, they had already been in that world. They had already seen the sun. They just totally forgot it. Now they have to remember it, recollect it. So the, the, what I want to get across in this lecture mainly, and I'll, in the next lecture I'll develop it, Plato has two worlds. He's interested in the world of the forms. He's not interested in this world down here. Aristotle wipes out the world, the forms, he, he and he philosophizes about the world that we live in. Plato is the father of rationalism. Aristotle is the father of empiricism. Empiricism is view that we we know the world through sense experience. That's the beginning of knowledge. Okay. That, and next lecture I'll develop this.